This video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Greetings and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrick's Wormuloid. This week's artifact is Vampire's Kiss, starring somehow Academy Award winner Nick Cage. But first, whether you're a man or a woman, or somewhere in between, no morning is complete without a shave of the eyebrows. Fortunately, the Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, feel, and smell good on the outside and, well, just the outside. Shipped right to your door, the club offers shaving products, shower products, and oral products. You heard me right, oral. Right now, they're offering Earth Enthusiasts custom starter sets for just five Earth dollars each. I personally love the shaving set, complete with an executive razor, prep scrub, shave butter, and a delicious post-shave dew. So grab five ones and hit the club by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash aliensguide, or clicking the link in the description. Without their help, we couldn't keep making this show. And now, back to this week's artifact. Vampire's Kiss follows business human Peter Lowe, who, true to his name, likes to get low. Get low, get low, get low. One night, he trades names with a cougar named Rachel, and, as is custom, she gives him a hickey. Sufficiently sucked off, he gets back to the grind of doing absolutely nothing. After thoroughly applying the KonMari method, Peter learns he's got Nosferat flu, more commonly known as HPV. Without the proper ointment, he turns into a classic fangbanger, avoiding neon signs, speaking in tongues, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and sleeping under a futon. And when his secretary Alva is unable to produce a misplaced contract, he reminds her of her job description. You're the lowest on the totem pole here, Alva. The lowest. Fearing she won't get a good reference, Alva hits up an auto shop for bullets, but all they have are movie-grade blanks. She miraculously finds the file right on her desk, but it suddenly becomes irrelevant. Too late! Too late! Too late! Too late! Along with the employee handbook. Peter shotguns a gun, and thinking he's invincible, brags about it to the whole neighborhood. I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! After a quick visit to the dentist, he strolls into the club cavity-free. He binges on a new girl, and then burns off the calories with a walk. When Alva's brother finally decides to take his sister seriously, he gives Peter some much-needed Ambien, courtesy of Home Depot. Vampire's Kiss is a take on the vampire mythos popularized by Bram Stoker's Twilight. The film plays with the archetypal mother sucker through the characteristics and themes we've associated with Earth's depictions. Like the great-great-great-granddaddy of vampire novels, Dracula, Vampire's Kiss focuses on class and titties. Where Dracula features a Romanian property owner who slurps down peasant blood, the wealthy Peter subsists on the metaphorical blood of his working-class secretary and the literal blood of horses. Peter collects that Getty Green by lounging around all day, while Alva frantically scrambles for pennies on the Glarbatron. And while Peter lives in a swanky studio in Manhattan, Alva lives in a cramped abode with her brother and mother in an all-too-relatable situation. Contrasting Peter's class-obsessed lifestyle further is the cab driver, who works solely to provide for his ball and chain. That is work, and that is laugh. This class dichotomy serves to ask the question, were Midtown yuppies the vampires of the 20th century, or just werewolves? Vampire's Kiss also borrows aesthetic cues from another Earth classic, Nosferatu, which even makes a Stan Lee cameo. Cage channels the performance of actor Max Schreck, emphasizing his over-the-top facial expressions and annoyingly pretentious speaking patterns. This is my kingdom, and my palace is but two blocks from here. Which, if you ask me, is a tad grandiloquent. This style takes roots in Bela Lugosi's quintessential turn as Count Chocula. We will be leaving tomorrow evening. But the film is no mere homage. No way, no Howie Mandel. Where most vampire films unambiguously show a real makeover, Vampire's Kiss questions whether Peter is actually a vampire or just high as f**k. 
In many vampire films, we identify with the protagonist as they discover their lack of reflection. Here, we witness a similar scene, but with Peter's perfect eyebrows clearly visible. By denying the audience access to Peter's POV, coupled with Cage's subtle performance, the film creates a distance between Peter and the viewer that allows for an effective criticism of corporate yuppie culture without the risk of understanding what the hell is happening in the film. Where am I? Oh, Christ, where am I? Much like when Karen asks to take a day off to visit her sick aunt, narcissism runs rampant. Throughout the film, Peter seeks true love, but mostly rendezvous with club rats. When Peter finally reaches into his imagination to conjure the ideal woman, she simply reflects the qualities that he likes about himself. I like poetry, horseback riding, Vivaldi, and long weekends in the country. <laughs> Those are exactly the same things that I like. But his shattered psyche can't maintain the fantasy, as even his imagined dream girl starts to yell at him like he's screwed the pooch without calling it the next day. Everybody knows you gotta call the pooch. Call the pooch. Gotta call the pooch. All of this amounts to a film with a difficult plot to grasp, especially if you watch it on lewds. Is it about a career-obsessed yuppie whose inability to find love has zonked his bonker? Is it about a Casanova who can't get over a girl named Rachel Ghoul, Bruce's schoolyard crush? Or is it simply about a man who becomes a 20th century Dracula? All this tonight on 60 Minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The people who hosted that show are long dead. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrix Wormwood. Don't get bit. A Yagulian sized thanks to the Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today's episode. Whether you want to look clean shaven or unemployable, the Dollar Shave Club has your entire body covered. For just $5, try their classic shave starter set, complete with their signature razor, their shower starter set, with more scented soaps than a single mom, or their oral set, which speaks for itself. So hit the club by visiting dollarshaveclub.com slash aliensguide, or clicking the link in the description. Without their support, we couldn't keep the lights on, which is what Earthlings called the sun. Mm.